Let's get started. Now, Jesus, we thank you for your word. Now, Father, open up our eyes of our understanding that we may walk in truth. Shake somebody by the hand and say hi. That was easy because y'all look really nervous again. Now, we've been talking about love. Somebody say love. love. Now, we've learned from history that the word of God is our oldest manuscript that we can use for education, for right living. And dictionaries come from men's understanding based on uh, how, how can I say that? Somebody had to call a rock a rock. Right? God said, let there be light, and there was light. So we know the foundation has to be from God. All intelligence, all disciplines have to come from God. And we began to talk about love, and we saw that in the scriptures, God is love. So in order for you and I to, anybody ever heard of Christianity? In order for you to be a real Christian, you have to have the Spirit of Christ. But what we're known for is a word called discipline, which our nation lacks. Our nation lacks discipline. They lack rule. Everybody thinks they're cowboys. Come on, everybody thinks it's a new frontier, I'm going to do it my way, and they're going to give me credit for it. No, it don't work like that. And Christianity has been suffering a cowboy mentality. A lot of people are doing it their own way, but Jesus has created disciples. He's created a discipline. Every rabbi has a, te has a student. And in order for you and I to be disciples, we need to first know the discipline and know the responsibility. Our responsibility is to know the discipline and then teach it. We don't just teach from the head. We have to first live what we learn and then be able to teach it. That's when you know you're a disciple. Now, I grew up in New York, so I, and, and I'm a guy. Somebody say, hey, we see that. So I'm very impressionable. So you ever heard of Bruce Lee? I'm 6'2", I'm black. Bruce Lee might have been 4'8", and Chinese. I came out the movie, Into the Dragon, I was like this. I was the master. <laughs> Come on, because I always wanted to do karate. And when you saw it, for an hour and a half, you was like. <laughs> so for an hour and a half, something went inside that I thought I could do. So the more discipline that goes in, something inside of you should be saying, I could do that. Or I could love the unlovely. I could be kind to strangers. But the true discipline doesn't go in. What has been going in is covetousness, greed, popularity. Come on. And, and we want that. How many know that not everybody's been born cool? I was. And, I, and I'm not ashamed to say, I know I'm cooler than most of y'all, but I don't use it. There's some people that just ain't cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't try to be what you're not. But when it comes to discipline, if you learn that one plus one is two, don't try to tell people it's three. Yeah. So what's been happening is because there has been a, a lack of real love, Christians have been changing what love means. Amen. And so we have to get back to a place where you realize that you will be held accountable if you are a disciple. And we're going to look at this. Go real quick to Acts chapter 4. We're going to start at verse number 7. The, the disciples called now apostles are now doing what Jesus had done. Jesus said in his day, when I go away, Greater works shall ye do because I go to my Father. Now, he wasn't saying you're going to do greater things. You will have the quantity. You will be able to do more because there will be more of you doing it. You know, let me, let me, let me say this, and, and I hope you can hear this the right way. The devil is afraid because at the, this is the first time in history he doesn't know what to do. He's outnumbered. Let me give you an example. 
that Jesus was the son of God, the only begotten son of God. That's what you have to understand. You know, like you're being born again, that's different than being begotten. All right. When Jesus was in one spot, Satan said, let's kill him. He died. They thought they won. God raised him from the dead. The spirit of God now goes into the believers. Now Satan looks around. He said, I killed one. Now it's 120. Then they went preaching. 5,000 people could say, he goes, oh my goodness, I killed one. Now it's 5,000. We have been multiplying. And Satan has been diminishing. But the world is not going to get better. Come on. Can I just help your theology? It's going to end, and it's going to end the way the Bible says it's going to end, but not everybody will be lost. Amen. That's what you have, that's your responsibility to help seek and save them that are lost. You can't change the world. If you can change the world, you can change God's word. And so you got to get to a place where you become so disciplined that when people see you, they'll know there's hope. And not just religion. And look what happens. You know, God used them to do a miracle, verse 7. And when he had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him, doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now here's the verse I want you to look at. Verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Amen. Now here's what you got to see. These were fishermen. These, these guys were not going to temple. These guys were not learned in the scriptures. They were dirty fishermen. Unlearned. Ignorant. Come on, help me. And automatically, supernaturally, God infused them with his power in a healer, impotent man. And so they had to take knowledge. They said, we knew these guys. Can I? I don't want to say. I'm sorry. Those of you that understand this word. You ever heard the word stupid? Right? That's offensive, but I'm just going to use it in an analogy. The stupid guy did it. You know, it's not fair that I'm saying like that, but it was like, it was like, those ignorant guys just did that. They don't know nothing. We've never even seen them in the temple. How do these guys do this stuff? Then they took knowledge. Oh, they've been with Jesus. You see? They, they recognize, oh, they've been with somebody. Yeah. They're finally doing what their discipline showed them to do. Yeah. You know, a struggle with men becoming, you know, young men becoming men, the struggle is they're not disciplined. They didn't have a father to show them, no, you don't do that, no. And then what happens with discipline? Can I, can I help you, anybody here? George, you're bigger than me now. X, X, what do they call the word? With wise, come over here. And don't get mad at me, don't have no flashback. Watch this. Give you an example of a father's discipline. Did you kiss that girl? Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that again. Sit back in your seat. <laughs> discipline. See? Discipline has praise and correction. You're not always wrong, and you need to know that. Oh, you did good. And you need to know when you did wrong. And that's how you know you are under a discipline. When the disciples could not cast out a, a devil, Jesus didn't go over them to them like this. Oh, it's okay. I know how hard things could be at times. No, he called them perverse and wicked because they couldn't cast out a devil. You'd be like, why he had to go off on me? Because he let them know that it was me doing it, not in your power. So if we do not learn 
discipline through correction, we don't know whether we're doing it right or wrong. Yes. So like when a father lets his son kiss a girl and say, good job, Johnny. What do you mean good job? That little girl's now going to think she's going to get married. Never mind. So just like God, he chastens his people. And the Bible says he only chastens them that he loves. Come on. You know, it's like you. You don't, you don't love your children if you don't correct them. Right? Little Muffin going to the stove, and you know what's on, and you're just looking. And before Muffin hit that thing, you just don't do that, Muffin, because you love them. And so when it comes to discipline, nowadays in, in most churches, there it's like a show. It's, it's, it's popular. It's hip. It's cool. It's not a lot of repentance. <laughs> You know, the, the reason why when, when Moses went up to, to the mountain, first thing he came down was, was rules. Because people are bad. <laughs> All right, how many had a baby? They cute infants. Let them grow up to be a toddler. Snatching stuff from each other. And if they can't get it. <laughs> you ever see the movie Aliens? I don't know where them kids get them teeth from, but they be like. <laughs> And they can see another kid cry, and they just keep on. <laughs> and they don't, and you know, and you'd be like, well, how do they do that? Human, born in sin. They need discipline. And uh, unfortunately, in, in, in a lot of inner cities, they don't use discipline. They use compliments. Little Muk Muk got $100 sneakers, but he don't know his ABCs. Wow. Come on. Right, right. Joe Bob. No, what's his, what's, what's his street name? Mulaco. He, he got a Benz and he living in a project with his mother. That's not discipline. And then he got six clubs on it. So the reason why I'm saying it is because as Christians, we have a discipline. There is a right way and a wrong way. And we're being inundated nowadays where everybody's just doing what they want. It doesn't work like that. And you got mainline preachers on the television telling you it's going to work out right. How's it going to work out right when God said it ain't going to work out right? People need to be corrected when they're wrong. Anybody have hair? You ever not comb your hair? It won't work out. Right? Your hair will be knotty or whatever it is until you work that thing out. You got to put something in it. And some of you got kinks. Get the kink out. And so you see, they took knowledge. They, they were with their master. You know, can it be said of you and I that we have a master and that we've been following the discipline? The only way it's possible is by doing what was shown to us. And it's not just saying, you know, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love you. No. Love is not saying it. Love is showing it. Only time you need to say you love somebody when they look like they need to hear it. <laughs> and the only time they look like they need to hear it is when nobody showed it. If you show it, they don't need to hear it. Because actions, is it true? Actions speak just a little bit louder? No. Actions speak louder than words. And so, oh, a hand clap. Wow. I'm not used to that in my first hour. No. <laughs> Go to Hebrews 5.10. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 10. Because many times, you know, and, and not just many times, how many realize it don't make a difference how old you are. If you're right, you're right. You know, we need to show respect to our elders, but if you're right, you're still right. So Hebrews 5.10 says, It's called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered. See ye are what? Dull of hearing. Many times you can't learn more because you didn't learn what you were supposed to learn the first time. Anybody ever went to school? I mean like real school, right? Elementary school? What comes after elementary school in Jersey? Middle school? We had junior high school. Anybody went to junior high school? Anybody went to high school? Anybody went to college? Anybody went to grad school? Right? Yeah, a couple of you. Right? What happened? You passed. 
you pass tests. You retain knowledge and you did something to prove it. In this walk, if you don't do things to prove you have knowledge, you can't go forward. I'm Vincent. I've been in the church 47 years. Okay, Vincent, quote, judges, nah, man, I've just been here 47 years. That's got to count for something. Yeah, man. That counts for the fact that you've been here 47 years, and you'll probably be here another 47 years if you cannot pass the test that God places before you. Life is a series of tests, but along these tests, you're going to help somebody. Amen. You know what it says about older women? It says, teach the younger. Yes. It don't say compliment them. It says, teach them. Yes. Teach them how to love their husbands. Teach them how to raise their children. You know, not just compliment them. You teach them. Yes. Look at our younger generation. They have no God. You know, I guess Hollywood is, is raising them. Kids with $400 strollers. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with it, but you know, you know, hope your kid can read. Now look what it says. Ready? For when, you're verse 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. While they should have been teaching, they still needed to learn. Look at somebody and say, that's not me. That's not me. And you don't even look at nobody. <laughs> I, can see if, I can see faith was strong. When you look at it, if you have been in this long enough, you should be able to hear the deep things of God. And you should be able to teach the, the, the little things of God. You should be able to teach. You should be able to demonstrate everything that you've learned and also now be able to also teach it. Maybe it's just me. If you have spent any time with Jesus, you should be able to do what he showed you. He said, I, he said, what I hear, I say, and what I see, I do. What have you heard that you're saying? And what have you seen that you're doing? Many of us seen preachers, and we're doing what the preacher did. We've heard preachers, and so we're doing what the preacher did. So we might as well call ourselves preacherings. <laughs> right? Because we're showing our discipleship to them more than to Jesus. You ever heard this compliment, you act just like your father? That's a good compliment. You know, Jesus said, when you see me, you've seen the father. Mm. This message may not be exciting to you, but think about it. He said, when you've seen me, you've seen the father. That should be our testimony. You have to want that to be your testimony. You can't say, well, I'm better than George. I'm better than Robert. I'm better than... No, that's not a testimony. Your testimony is when you've seen me, you've seen my father. That's your testimony, and it has to be your testimony, and you have to go for it. You know... um, Let's let's go on. Ready? For when you had for when for the time you ought to be teachers. See, you ought to be teaching. Ought. Ought. You ever get out of line and they say you ought to sit down? I'm gonna look at you. You ought to be teaching. You should have at least mastered what you already know. You might not know everything, but what you've learned. You should have mastered that already. And you want to know what the word master means? Teacher. It's the same word, master, teacher, rabbi, doctor. It's all the same word. So you should have mastered what you've already learned to the point where you're able to not just do it, but teach it. Don't end up like these newfangled Christians where service is a show. I'm going to go to church get my praise on. Really? 
Go get your praise on. How about go to church and worship <laughs> and find out what's wrong with you. Then go back to the club and get your praise on. <laughs> you can't bring the world into the church. The church is about a discipline. We're, we're, <laughs> praise God. We have a lot of things going on here <laughs> today. That was quite humorous. I will show that later. <laughs> I'll do it one more time. <laughs> For when you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. You need the word of God watered down so you don't get offended. You're a baby. That's not a good testimony. Come on, help me. And you know, you got to get to a place where you realize, nah, nah, tell me more about me. Yeah, me. What kind of dog I act like? <laughs> I got like a spot in hell. You go, oh, sit there, run up back in here. I got, I'm going to hell, where? How can I get out? But no, see, everybody got to sugarcoat it, water it down because you're a babe because you can't even teach yet. And you got to ask yourself a question. Can I be nice to you? No? Yeah, say yeah, be nice to me. Yeah, the reason why you can't teach is because the devil knows how to steal what you have. So it's not that you're bad, you just don't know how to defend yourself. The Bible says when, when the word is sown, Satan comes immediately to steal the word. So he's been stealing from you and you've been accepting it because you've been allowing other things to satisfy you. Now, now, George, come over here. Your wife is here, right? Can y'all both come over here? Now, this is a bad analogy, but I'm going make to it, make it make sense anyhow. Now, this is his wife, right? You like her, right? Her. Look at her, man. He grabbed her, hooked her right up. He said, which one I like her? I love her. Now, what if Joe Bob from the South, what if, what if you read her, her little diary? We're making this up as we go.